This is Copy Bartoli stage two. This is the stage profile. We're just going up the last climb up to uh, Monte Leone. Uh, this is Eric Fetter off the front. And this is a super stage. And why I think Ethan Hater is a different rider to people that who think they are. So in this race is Matthew van der Poel, who Hater beat in the previous stage, um, which I showed yesterday. But uh, Mario Schmidt outgunned Eddie Dunbar in the sprint. Mario Schmidt's in the leader's jersey, but he's well gone. Um, and this is sort of the elite group. And he also have a really strong team here. They've got Dunbar. Tullet and Hater, so that you can see there's already a lot of pressure going on. Eric Fetto for, uh, uh, for <laughs> sorry, uh, Eolo Cometa is up the road, so he's looking pretty strong. But this is this climb after this is basically downhill until this like wall um, to the finish, and we'll see Ethan Hater's bridging cross. It looks like he's got spat, but he just rides at such a sort of low cadence ish and just looks so relaxed. It's like unbelievable, but he's actually making the bridge and he's managed to spat Vanderpoel up this climb. And you could see before it was pretty hard. They had this Roncofredo climb, which is 7K at 3.5%, that she did quite a lot of times, but it was just a hilly day all day. And this is why I think Ethan Hater is different to Vanderpoel. Ethan Hater on these sort of like relatively hard stages can get a result. Now you might say, okay, Vanderpoel was ill and all the rest of it. And that's true. Here's Simon Carr coming across as well as Florian uh, de Tees, I think it was, uh, for Alpes and Phoenix. Um, but yeah, Ethan Hayes is super, super strong at climbing as well as sprinting. And I think this is why he's a slightly different rider. Um, yeah, Flores did here about Albus and Benex are coming across. Um, and I think it makes it makes his racing different uh, in comparison to Vanderpol, where Vanderpol probably a better cobbled classics guy um, than Hater would definitely have a better cobbled classics guy. But I think on the hillier parkour, Ethan Hater is different. Um, and I think on the longer climbs, you know, he almost won Volta Algarve last year. If he hadn't have crashed in the time trial, I reckon he might have done. So it is, he's definitely a different rider. I think this race here shows potentially that the Ardennes is quite similar to that. He'd do better in, so maybe a liege baston liege type finish. But anyway, there's a lot of attacks on the downhill, um, but nothing really stuck. Um, and instead, we've now skipped to the final climb because, to be honest, nothing happened. There were just attacks left, right, and center. Our dear um, for UAE is up the road, and here we go to the steep climb. And I think it's really important to remember on this climb, Ineos have effectively the GC lead with Eddie Dunbar. Ben Tullet is also high on GC, and they have Ethan Hater for the finish. And this finish here really shows how much good teamwork really can help you. Unfortunately, it's just highlights, so you couldn't really see too much of the early race, uh, which is why there's a sort of all of these videos I'm going to make about the race are sort of quite short. But I think they're going to put across the key point of the climb. So you can see here it's a super, super steep climb. They sort of know he's going to die. Like he's been out for like a good five kilometers. You can see Nat now Tetz Fatsion, who I'm a big fan of, finished top five in the Tour of Alps recently. Uh, he's there, um, as well as some of the Italian national team uh, and some Conti guys as well. Uh, but the, bi the, big t uh, the big sort of threats, I guess, on this stage really were Ethan Hayter, um, Tetz Fatsion, and then some of the other guys like Sobrero, who was racing for Bike Exchange. Um, Nicola Conti was there for Italy as well. Ulissi Hershey for the UAE boys. Um, and yeah, so those are the sort of guys I guess to watch out for. Um, and one number one, three, one is Tetz Fatsion here in the middle. He's looking pretty relaxed and Hayter, Ethan Hayter's in the orange jersey. So UAE here, I mean, a prime Hershey would also be a candidate, maybe a prime Ulysses, but I think, um, you know, at, at this stage, I don't really know what's happened to Hershey, um, but Ardea is still off the front looking strong, but nothing, you know, this climb is steep. It goes on for a, quite a long time and then finishes in sort of a flat cobbled running. And Ineos quite clever here because to be honest, if they just drilled it, Hater might get spat. Like there are some pure climbers here like Santiago Umbao um, and a couple others. So it's definitely one of those ones where, you know, if they drilled it, they could maybe go for, Ethan, uh, for Eddie Dunbar. But I think instead what they do is just basically not go too hard, make sure Ethan Hayter can get over the finish and then rely that he probably does have a better sprint than everyone else, um, which isn't incorrect. So here comes Nicola Conchi for the Italian national team on the right-hand side of the road. He's really pushing on quite a lot. Um, and I think having good position as well, we'll see in the finish is quite important. Eddie Dunbar in the virtual GC as well, struggling at the back here. Uh, and it just goes to show that it is actually quite a steep, um, a steep climb uh, and not super easy just to just to sit in the wheels, obviously, but also like, that, you know, if you're a better guy on the longer climbs, this this is, could be uh, quite hard. It's more like sort of a flesh well on type finish. And you can see here that, that Santiago Umbao is going on the attack here uh, for Drone Hopper. Uh, I don't really know why he's doing that. Tess Fatsion probably didn't appreciate that, but Tess Fatsion is a good climber, so it probably does make sense that... Maybe they went on the attack trying to drop people. Here's Sobrero on the front, just setting a good tempo. Hate is also on the front as well. I guess on the climb like this, there's no real need to draft. There's Kieran Utebrix as well, who's a really highly rated 19-year-old from Belgium. Um, 
who's had some good results as well recently in, in the tour about. So coming through here, watch Ben Tullett is on the right-hand side of Ethan Hayter. This is where it starts to get steep. And Ben Tullett knows that you've got to be in going around this corner first. He basically blocks off Conchi, managed to get Hayter on his wheel, uh, and is going super, super strong around this corner. And you're going to see it now flattens off. It now starts to get onto some cobbles. And the positioning for this is so, so important. So Hayter's now slid onto uh, onto tullet's wheel and round this corner they can't really pass because it goes left it goes right we're now going to slip switch to the end of footage and tullet's starting to lead out absolutely full and hates is looking around i think he's trying to give tullet the win i think he's like i'm gonna let him do it because he's going so strong i think it's only now that he realizes that actually it's not going to happen so Brera's coming around and hater only does of what six pedal strokes and takes the win it was an unbelievable lead out by Ineos. I think it goes to show how strong Ben Tullet is, not just as necessarily a pure climber, but also, you know, he finished a really good time trial recently uh, in Basque Country and also how strong Ethan Hayter is just on those sprints. Like, you know, I think it was a real masterclass from Ineos. There goes Demarki and some others uh, coming across the line. But anyway, I hope you did enjoy this video. Um, it's It was a really interesting stage race. We've got more stages to come. Uh, and then we'll also have GP Industria e Artiginato uh, to follow as well. Um, so anyway, cheers for watching. Hope you did enjoy. Make sure to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.